Oh, we're not done yet with this thing. We still have a little more to do. Let's get started. All right, we are immediately back with the tracker. Just got through putting an oil pan gasket on there. So what we're gonna be doing now is putting a valve cover gasket on here. Because, well, there's a lot of residue on top of this engine, which would imply that, well, we probably have a valve cover gasket leak. Uh, unlike a V8 engine, this is not a cut and dry job because, well, you got coil packs in place and some miscellaneous hoses and all. You got this cross member bar that has to come off. There's a few little things that need to be addressed before you can actually pull this thing off. So go ahead and get started with that. Obviously, if you've seen the video on the oil pan gasket, you'll know that I already took this thing off once before, so I didn't re-secure the bolts because, well, I need to take it off again. So get that out of the way. And the next thing we're gonna have to do is get these coil packs off. And at least the way the wire harness is made, it's really hard to get things mixed up because it's made to be in line with the whole engine. So you got an eight millimeter bolt holding each coil in place. Pull those off and probably not even gonna worry about pulling the wires off. Just take the whole thing out and move them aside to get them out of the way and address the rest of this garbage. So let me grab the tools and let's get started. Four eight millimeter bolts later and we have our coil packs out, exposing everything there. The next thing is a hose right here and a hose right here. Simple little springy worm clamps. A pair of pliers will knock those out. And we have our throttle cable bracket on a 10 millimeter bolt. The other bolts holding the oil pan, I mean the valve cover down, are also 10 mil. You got two right here, got two right here, and two right here that have to come out. So with that, go ahead and get the rest of this stuff off. Got everything off that needs to come off. So now the next move is going to be basically prying this thing off or at least tapping it lightly to break the seal from the old gasket. So you could do that in one of two ways, either tap it with a mallet or something, or just get a small screwdriver and just carefully pry between the cover and the cylinder head enough so that it'll break the seal and allow you to pull the thing off. So let me go ahead and get this thing off. All right, we got our valve cover off. There's the gasket right there. It's not broken or anything, but because it is a rubber piece, that rubber can get weak enough that even with the pan snugged down, it could very well become pliable enough to allow oil to seep between it and the cylinder head surface. Besides that gasket, there's also the matter of some O-rings where the coil packs go. Those need to be pried out. I'll get that dipstick in a minute. They need to be pried out and replaced with fresh ones so we don't have oil seeping out from the lifter valve, not lifter valley, uh, well, I don't know what you might call those damn things on these overhead cam engines, but we don't want oil to come out from there and make their way into the spark plug area and muck all that up. So I'm going to get a pick, start picking all that garbage out too. Stand by. 
All right, right near the bottom, I can see this better, right near the bottom is where these little O-rings are seated at. I'm using a little angle pick thingy to get them out, quick and easy. Of course, the old, uh, new ones go in the same way. It'll probably be recommended to actually wet the things down with some old oil. That way it'll make it easier to work them in. Let me get some old oil. All right. Got a little bit of old motor oil here in a cap. Wet that down real good. Get them all nice and oiled up. And then go ahead and put them back in. Kind of work them in there. Another reason for having the oil on them too is to help make it easier to put the uh, coil pack boots in place back onto their spark plugs. If they're dry, you might risk damaging these things and then having them leak anyway. in there okay now we got that all done get that oil out of the way so it doesn't cause me a problem later next little thing on these little mounting points are little rubber washers that also need to be replaced these are all crushed and boogered up no good but we have plenty of new ones here to go on all the bolt holes for our, well, they're actually studs and like cap nuts that go over the studs to hold this thing down. So with our O-rings in, I'll put the washers on last, but we do have to put on our gasket. And that's a simple thing. Just kind of work it into the groove of the pan or valve cover get it worked in there make sure all the different curves are matched up to the rest of the cover so that's all said and done now we can actually put this mess back on Another thing to make note of before you actually slap the oil valve cover back on is this little hemispherical shaped piece of rubber. It goes back here on the back of the cylinder head and it just sits in there. You gotta make sure it's nice and flush so it doesn't shift in any kind of way where it might cause a problem later. But uh with that seated in place, now we can go ahead and put our valve cover back on. So let's go ahead and do that. We are done with the reassembly of all this stuff. So now all that's left for me to do is just throw some fresh oil in here since the old oil was indeed bad. So I'll go ahead and do that and change the filter while I'm at it. But as for the valve cover job, that is technically done. So until the next time, as usual, like, subscribe, notifications, TikTok, website, all that good stuff. Stay tuned for more car stuff and other stuff, and I'll catch you later.